live from the Orchard Hotel in San Francisco. It's the Will and Willie Show. Hey! Straw, come up, come up from the food trough and and have a seat. I'm Paul Wells. I'm Will Durst, and I'm Willie the Brown. And uh, we're here he at indeed. the beautiful Orchard Hotel at Powell Street and near near Bush. Well, on Bush Street near Powell, actually. It's, it's and, Orchard Park, isn't it? Uh, well, the, the other this, one is the Orchard Garden oh, Hotel. Oh, well, this, is, this the is the Orchard Hotel. Hotel. There's Same no, people own both. Though. Yeah, but no park here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we're... Are an Orchard. <laughs> midterm election special number four. A lot's happened since number three. We have a new justice in the Supreme Court. Kind of an oxymoron, but there you go. Yeah, well, it was know. a difficult I, I, process. I, you know, it's now uh, six to three, would you say? Yes, six to three. No, no, six to four. Four, five to four. Mm -hmm. Five Music. to four. Yeah, Music. it's five to four. And there is, um, um, frankly, you know, we got to make sure Ruth stays alive. Most important person in America today is it's Ruth Bader Ginsburg's trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the movie? that she was in, yeah. the documentary, and now they're doing a feature length. And then the feature length, they're going to pick up and try to expand the opportunity for uh, people who are, that don't go to landmark theaters. Right? <laughs> see it. And a lot of people don't go to landmark. No, no, the art I went houses. To landmark, I went to landmark a couple of days ago. This, somebody had been there. You've got to go see um, Monster in Men. Monster and men. Monsters and men, yeah. Yeah, monsters and men. I have no idea what it is. Okay, keep your money. <laughs> <laughs> is that going in Sunday's column? <laughs> yes, it's going in Sunday's column. You can tell right off, though, whether or not you're in a movie that has any legs because you look around and there's nobody in there but you and the guy that wears the raincoat. <laughs> <laughs> the flasher. I mean, you're, you're, you're stuck in there with... And that, so can you imagine? Only two people in a whole big theater. It's, and uh, and they still run the movie. I couldn't get them to get it started. I kept yelling, you know, like you're doing. Hey, open up, open up. They finally did. And I then said, shut it down, shut it down. It was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen anything you like? Yes, I have. Crazy Rich Asians. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. You have not seen that? No, I haven't. Oh, no. oh, oh. That is an absolute must. That is an absolute must. It is to die for. It's funny from beginning to end, literally. I tell you what you don't want to see, though, is night school. Oh, night school. No. Kevin uh, Hart? Kevin Hart is overexposed. Uh. Way overexposed. But if you're into westerns, there is a very, very good movie called The Sisters Brothers. And Ooh. it really is an old-fashioned yeah, yeah. Western. It's not a shoot 'em up as such. You know, they don't run around drawing and what have you. Uh, they do what Western people used to do: hide behind something and shoot the enemy, <laughs> 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 ambush the enemy. And this is—it's—it's it's really a movie though that deals with your psychic because of the way in which these two brothers uh, operate. And it's a travelogue. It's you know, it's somewhere in Missouri, then it's somewhere in Colorado, then it's somewhere. And it comes to San Francisco oh, wow. in the gold rush period, and then it goes up to where the gold is. It's a whole thing. Really, a very, very good movie. Have it's you, worth your two hours. Have you seen Star is Born? No, I have not. I went over to see Star is Born, and the line was longer than the line at a Dreamforce concert. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. I, I don't know why I would go see it anyway. I've seen two. I saw, <laughs> I saw one with Barbara Streisand. Right, right. I saw one with Judy Garland. Right, right. And I wasn't old enough to see the first one. You know, there was another Frederick one. March, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. was old enough to the first one. And, so and there was one before that. Well, there what price Hollywood? Yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go I'm gonna go see it, though. I have to. i got to write about it. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm going to go see it because they tell me it's Lady Gaga with a makeup. And I, this has got to be seen. <laughs> Did you did you watch any of the Kavanaugh hearings? I watched them all. Uh, what what are your impressions? Bad or as for Chris, your health. Chris Matthews would say, uh, your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you though that the allegation by Dr. Ford, yes, 
uh, from uh, Palo Alto, and the fact that uh, she was such an impressive uh, witness when she appeared. It's too bad the Democrats were not wise enough to shut up from that moment on and let uh, the Republicans deal with the environment she had created. When they decided, once he started to testify, i.e. the Democrats, uh, they decided that they were smarter than he is and they decided they could put him in a bad place because she had been so impressive. People refocused away from her testimony and they went to watch the scrimmage between the Democrats and the minority and this new justice of the Supreme Court, then a candidate. He flipped out, uh, they flipped out, uh, Lindsey Graham did the drama queen bit, uh, and Boy, it just got all, all confusing, and suddenly the whole question about this woman was totally and completely lost. And once they were able to do that, they have the votes. They had the votes. No matter what anybody says, Susan Collins is never going to vote with Democrats. No matter what anybody says, Jeff Flake is never going to vote with Democrats. And all those Republicans are really disciplined. They really do follow leadership right over the cliff if they chose to do so. That's how they ended up keeping us from, uh, from the nominee that Obama put in place. Merrick Garland. Garland, yes. for all those months, nothing happened. He couldn't even get a hearing because they are really disciplined. They don't break ranks on anything. But Democrats, Democrats should have understood that. They never insisted on a hearing. I mean, it happened. Mitch McConnell said, we're not going to have a hearing. We're not. And then, boom, you never heard another word about it. You didn't hear Democrats protest. You didn't hear them shut down. Uh, the, 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 the White House, uh, the everything, just the, because Republicans fight. Republicans, every single moment. Democrats, oh, and then, and then they move on. Yes, you're correct. What they should have done is refuse every time they could to allow the Senate to get a quorum. Right. If they cut out, then you either you schedule his hearing and let it go up or down, or we're not having any meetings. You're not going to progress and do anything. We're going to shut That's the nation down. That's what Republicans would do. That's what they always do. They really discipline in that regard. And now they're going after Diane Feinstein. They're asking the FBI to investigate Diane Feinstein. And last night, Trump, in one of his speeches, started talking about her and making fun of her and how she said she knew nothing about the so-called leak. And lo and behold, uh, he said, uh, you know, and leaks are crime. And with that, the audience started yelling, lock her up, lock her up. And he proceeded to say, they're not talking about Hillary, they're talking about Diane, you know, which is typical Trump. And so on this score, we Democrats were the losers. The Republicans have now put in place the tax plan they always wanted. They put in place the business of eliminating the regulatory authorities or restricting it on a number of things, the environment, when you can vote and where you can vote and how you can vote and all those kinds of things. They have managed to put in place a person who is killing public education, that woman DeVos, and now they've got the court system and they're gonna do 100 plus more judges at less than the Supreme Court level. And they're all gonna be somewhere between 45 and 60 years of age, which means for the next 25 to 30 years, we're gonna be burdened with all these crazy Republican judges doing what they do best and that's restrict all of our rights, misinterpret the Constitution, and do all the bad things. And we Democrats have the blame for ourselves. Well, they get a fight. They get a, they, they get a pass that stem cell bill so they can use that research to generate a spine. I think, uh, <laughs> see, that's the problem. Republicans attack with torches and pitchforks. And Democrats have no idea, you know. Their, their, their response is to introduce legislation to reform pitchfork safety standards. Well, yeah. we you Democrats, put though, on those. at all times, you know, we want to be dignified. We want to be, uh, treat everybody equal. We do really believe in equal justice, equal treatment, fair play, the presumption of innocence, except 
when we're in our Me Too capacity, there's no such thing as presumption of innocence. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, we really want to give everybody a fair chance before we announce that we're not going to execute you. <laughs> we're on the Will and Willie show here. Yeah, uh, Republicans execute you and then do give an them investigation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, give them a yeah. moral service and, and don't bring the body. <laughs> <laughs> they send uh, their thoughts and prayers. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So tired of my thoughts. Although, let me tell you, California is unique in that regard. Somehow, some time ago, I don't know how it happened, but we started the process in this state of having the voters believe we do things in their interest. And as a result of that, we now have the Republicans or the third party by registration in the state of California. Mm -hmm. It's the Democrats, the independents are declined to state, and then the Republicans. We also have an incredible commitment from immigrants, people who favor immigrants, and in particular, Latinos. They cannot bring themselves to vote Republicans because a long time ago, Pete Wilson did us a favor. He said with Prop 187 back in, I don't know when it was, sometimes 90s. in the 90s, yeah. that uh, you could not get education if you were undocumented, you could not get health care, you could not get uh, access to the courts. All of that resonated with people. And we Democrats got all over it. And so we are literally the home of the resistance. Yes, we are. We are. We are the rebel base. That is San Francisco it. is Endor, and if, if which is why there's so many Ewoks running around. <laughs> okay, that's a Star Wars joke, and this does not look like a Star Wars audience. So I apologize for talking out of turn. Do you remember that Pete Wilson when he Prop 187 when he did that uh, that proposition on California that he got caught? Didn't he have an illegal maid? Didn't he have? Uh, and he did. And his response, his defense was he didn't know he had a maid. Mate, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Th that was his. That was his defense on having uh, an illegal, uh, uh, not documented as, as a maid in his house. Her name was Consuelo something. I don't know. She walked through the well, house. She had an you, apron but, on. But you know, the I didn't Democrats understand it. In those days, we did extremely well because we literally, really organized, and we have offered better quality candidates who seem to have a better understanding of what are the problems that people face and even some suggested solutions. We also had the benefit of Jerry Brown. Jerry Brown is a brand in the state of California. He could get elected again if he was eligible to go on the ballot. Well, he was elected 36 years ago when he was 36. So my theory is uh, every 36 years he'll be president. He was, pre he was governor when he was 36. He was governor when he was 72. At the age of 108, he'll be governor Come again. <laughs> Just a head in a jar. But it doesn't matter. And it'll by be, that time, it'll be technically public. It will be. That's yeah. my well, theory, yeah. But just think, all up and down the line, at one time in this state, Republicans were the dominant statewide office holders. Yeah. You had, uh, during the time that I served as speaker, and I served as speaker for almost 15 years, you Duke had Majin. Duke Majin for eight. You had Pete of my time period. You had Pete Wilson in there uh, for six and a half or seven years of my time period. I only had a Democratic governor for two years, Jerry Brown. I had Jerry Brown from 1980 to 1982, and that was it. All the other times, I had to deal with a Republican governor. You had other Republican statewide office holders. Uh, Duke Majin was attorney general at one time in this state. So you had Republicans in all categories. The last Republican governor was, of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. And so if you go back over the 50 years, there have been more Republican office holders statewide, and in particular in the governorship. And the time period from 19, let's say, 58 or so till today, you've only had four Democratic governors. You had the two Browns. You had Gray Davis. <laughs> Gray Davis for what? Six years? Five years? And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. There's only three. Yeah. Bad counter. All the other times, they've all been Republicans over all that time period. But as Republicans were winning at that level, we were slowly but surely 
doing the Kraft's work that got us a two-thirds majority in the Assembly, a two-thirds majority in the Senate, and all of the statewide. There's not one statewide office currently held by a Republican. Do you Since see that trend? You see that trend this year too. Well, does let me Cox, tell you. Does Cox have a have a chance? A ghost of a shell of a chance? He has a chance in another state. You know, he <laughs> <laughs> the state of confusion. <laughs> he, he's amazing. Yeah, this guy started out in Illinois, then he went to Indiana. Oh, right, he right. He ran place. for Cook County uh, Assessor or yes, something. Yeah. yeah, and he's lost every time. He just consistently <laughs> loses, and he keeps moving. And I gotta believe that it's investment opportunity for him. He's not interested in holding public office. You no, know? he's just moving around. So I think that Gavin is gonna win. We're going to win the lieutenant governorship because it's a Democrat only. We're going to win treasurership. It's Fiona Ma. We're going to win controller. We're going to win attorney generalship. It's Becerra. We're going to win secretary of state. It's Padilla. The only one that we may not win is the, the so-called superintendent of schools. My friend, uh, Tony Thurman, I hope he wins. But if he doesn't, it'll be an independent who beats him. And if the person running for insurance commissioner doesn't win, Lara, if he doesn't win as a Democrat, he'll be another independent. There are no Republicans that can win anything statewide. And Nancy may very well be the savior for Democrats, period. Because believe me, as things unfold, if we're able to win the six or seven seats that we're trying to win towards the 23 total needed to give Nancy the speakership back. Nancy may be the savior of this nation against the onslaught of the Republicans. She's the only one really tough enough, as she has demonstrated consistently. When she passed that health measure that became Obamacare, that even the Republicans won't dump. And they won't dump it because too much of it helps too many people, including a whole lot of bad voting Republicans. Uh, I'm sorry that it doesn't have some loyalty test before you use the benefit of it. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. The people who hated Obamacare are protesting to keep the Affordable Care Act intact. Yeah. And that's the one thing that Nancy was able to do. And it was something that almost every national administration since Roosevelt have tried to do. Everyone. Reagan tried it. Nixon tried it. Eisenhower tried it. Everybody who's held the presidency tried to get universal health care of some configuration. Only Obama and Pelosi put that together and made it work. And they were smart because they put in that provision that says you can't be turned down if you're going to die tomorrow. They ensure you today. You can't be turned down. That's the best part of the deal. <laughs> that is the best part of the deal. And I'm going to take get some health insurance the day I know I'm going to die. <laughs> We're on the Will and Willie Show live from the Orchard Hotel in San Francisco.